Dun, dun, dun. I have no idea. All right. I believe we I believe, I believe, I believe. Can you all... All right. First, <clears throat> are we live, and can you all hear us? Two questions. Two questions. There Start were two off. questions there. Yippee. Whoops. Oh, here we go. That was woot. like a whoop. Woot, woot. Okay. All right. I think we're good. Can we get a confirmation? We see right, you. We see you. Yes and yes. All right. Oh, yes well. and yes. Well. Hello, everyone. Hello. And spring has sprung. Well, spring will sprung tomorrow. tomorrow spring will spring tomorrow. And that will be here uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Yes. Thank you to the previous hosts. So we had um, Jamie and Christopher from Cabin Boy Knits. And then we had Stuart from The Wool Patch. So. And so then, you, we learned a lot from the previous two uh, tube duders. No, dude tubers. Tube dudes? I was right. Tube duders. <laughs> tubers. Whatever. What we, we learned a lot from the previous two uh, iterations. Um, and you will not be getting an education here on, on this one, <laughs> no, but we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to show. We're very excited about, Oh, um, I forget our cameras in the middle now. Sorry. Oh, we have, and I can't really see the chat cause you've got all that, those boxes in the way. So that's okay though. Um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, what, what spring means to us and some really fun knits that we can wear during springtime. Um, one thing that I want to quickly say is um, Stuart asked a very taboo question um, to all of us, and that question was, how many whips do we have um, on our needles, which I thought was really funny. But the uh, reason why I want to bring it up is we are starting a knit-along starting today, or make-along, that uh, for you to finish those whips. So we're doing our annual spring cleaning mal. And basically, all those whips that you have already started previous to today, finish them out, and then you can go ahead and uh, and enter those onto in our Ravelry page. Oh, hi, knitting long. posse friends. Okay, I love seeing all the names here. Me I too. Recognize so many of y'all. So thank you, everybody. Um, so let's start off with what's your favorite thing. Oh wait, before we start off with that. Okay, because I wasn't prepared to answer any questions. There today. is a we're having a giveaway. In this episode, there's a link below with a Google form, and yes. it's just for you to share what your favorite thing about spring is. We'll pick two winners, and then you guys can have your choice of a pattern. Or anything about spring. It's a very open prompt, and the prompt is the thing about spring. And you can, you know, Stuart was, was really clever about how he introduced his, um, but it's basically the same concept. If you want to write a poem, if you wanted to say something really, like, fun or talk about a favorite project the really it's wide open yeah and in case you were wondering real men do wear flowers stop it <laughs> you're such an asshole okay okay so what's your favorite thing about spring are you you're asking me yeah you or them oh you. me i don't i wasn't prepared what's your favorite thing about spring i have a lot of stuff i think one of my favorite things is like seeing the outdoors like mm become clean if that makes sense i hope yeah. this makes sense you know like you start getting pops of the green and all the different colors and you spend time out in your yard or your garden you clean it up you throw down some fresh mulch you do your first like grass cut of the season and it just smells lovely and the green and the grass is all like green and luscious and full and it's such a it's like a reinvigorating moment when when you have all that like liveliness coming back outside same and i love shorts and a sweatshirt or a cardigan yeah you definitely go with the shorts and a long sleeve shirt or a sweatshirt uh, I love very it. early on in the spring probably the end of this month beginning of april you're definitely a shorts oh by mid-april i'm definitely going to be shorts and like a sweatshirt for sure yeah. i love a good fire pit like there's nothing better than like a fire pit and getting all cuddly, whether it's in your sweater or a blanket on you. Love it. Yes. Oh, so speaking of sweaters, um, <clears throat> these are perfect sweaters for transitional weather, whether it be springtime or fall. These are um, fingering weight sweaters. This is the So Basic by Maxim Sear. It's my favorite sweater. I actually need to do another um, another soak of this um, 
it's starting to get stretched out because I've been wearing it so often. This is knit with um, shucks. This Primrose is, yarn yeah. in their house base. So it's I think it's like Corydale and something. It's a 50-50 blend. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Any of, any of you people that pay attention to what we say when we speak can answer that question for us. I don't remember, actually. Um. Anyway, yeah, color. So Cheryl says color is her favorite thing about spring. And you know what? Honestly, like I, I oh, agree. It's. Yeah. I was just thinking the other day, like our, th- it's fun to see the lawn turn green again, you know, and like these patches and then things are coming back to life and the crocuses are popping out. Um, so yeah, like I, I agree with you. I think spring is, spring is a good, like get back out there kind of, you know, feeling like whether we're doing yard work or meeting friends like outside around the fire pit, we get to light that grill again. Yeah. Grilling is nice. different fresh vegetables. And yes. My, one of my favorite things too is um, garden Thanks, centers. Fiber Hustle. Look at yes, their link f- linking things. Is um, garden centers start to open again? Yeah. And I love getting fresh herbs. So mint, uh, lemon, thyme. I really like having basil, mm-hmm. uh, lavender, and mint. I use quite a bit in the like spring and summer. We put it in iced tea. Yeah, is a huge thing, right? Love yeah. uh, fresh. We mint didn't have mint tea. last year. We didn't. We actually we didn't do a lot. Yeah. Last spring. Last spring was weird. So totally, but this is not the moment to talk about that. No. So and I love. Um, oh, a, spring is hope, Tina. Yeah, a really nice light dish that I like to make is um, boil some orzo and throw in some peas with it, yeah. and then once it's cooked, to rinse it off under cold water, get it nice and cool, and add in some fresh chopped mint, some um, olive oil. Yeah. Salt, pepper, Parmesan some cheese. lemon juice, some lemon zest, and Parmesan cheese. Mm. And it's such a nice, light, like springy, summery salad. Because I don't like uh, mayonnaise right. or salad dressing. So it's a way for me to have a nice, springy, like pasta, pasta salad, salad without yeah. the heaviness of that stuff. Yeah. And hello, Lisa, from Knit All the Yarn. Um, and then I am wearing Once in Floral. It is another nice lightweight fingering weight sweater. It is some color work. So again, this is from Primrose Yarn. And my yellow and this light brown are both from Brooklyn Tweed. This is Loft. Yeah. Really good job. Oh, they're both from Max. They are both Max. Max huh. and Sear. Yeah. All right. So let's Thank you to our wonderful moderators for yes. posting those links. Um, speaking of links, the patterns, most of the patterns that we talk about today sh- uh, are linked down below. As well as that prompt that we were talking about. I don't know if you've already mentioned it, but that's linked down below too to that Google form where you can put in your thing about spring, which is really exciting. So let's start with some. Sh- so I think a really good transitional piece from winter to spring is a smaller shawl, a yeah. lightweight shawl. Yep. So I have a bunch, and these are all really old shawls that I've knit. So They're classics. They're not old. Older. So this is the Groove Shawl by Stephen West. This is a really fun one. I actually have two here. This is my second iteration of it. You like the word iteration. That's the second time we've used it today. So it's nice, small, right? Yeah. It's not that schlinket size. It's not going to be too warm for you. This is all knit out of Brooklyn Tweed, I think. It's so, really gorgeous. Anna said, oh, Ray, the beard's back. That's because he got a chainsaw and he thinks he's a lumberjack again. So I'm getting ready um, to take my chainsaw out for its first spin around the block. So I need to look the part. Somebody had mentioned um, that they make chainsaw pants or something like that. You're going to need a whole chainsaw get up. Yeah. Um, so here is another groove shawl. Yeah, they're really pretty. This is knit out of Fiber Co. Acadia yarn. Yep. This is a beautiful blend. This one actually, if you can see, actually has buttons on it so that you can use all the yarn overs as a place to like, where's the button? Button. So you can use your yarn overs in the shawl as like buttonholes, yeah. I guess. I don't know that I ever button it though, but. No, but it looks nice. Right? Nice, light. Yeah. It's not super warm. This isn't really my color. But it's really pretty. And it's only, I think if I'm not mistaken, I mean, and this is just some cables on it. 
super easy, and some yarn overs. I feel like I would love to knit this. It's one of my favorite knits, actually. This is Brooklyn Tweed? Um, no, actually, that's a lie. This is Fiber Co. Acadia yarn as yeah. well. Um, all right, next up. So next up, so really, you know, like to Kevin's point, <clears throat> for us, shawls and hats are a really great transition uh, pieces for the weather. And I think, so you all know my oh. favorite, and I, we talk about this all the time, are my sock head slouch hats. I really think that they're a perfect <clears throat> uh, lumberjack ray for Halloween. No, no Halloween. That's going to be real life ray. I'm going to go to um, L.O. Bean, and I'm going to um, buy everything. There's no buffalo plaid, though, because Chip and Aaron took it all. Chip and Aaron did steal all the buffalo plaid. But that's okay. So Sockhead Slouch um, hat by Kelly McClure is, for those, of you, for those of you who are new, hi, I'm Ray, and this is Kevin. And that's the Sockhead Slouch. And that's the Sockhead Slouch right there. Oh, boop, boop there. Um, my, I have quite a few of them, but we put, I put, we put four of them together. Um, what? Aaron. As if. This is my very first sock head slouch and it's my absolute favorite. It's very, it's very. It's your most worn It's definitely item. my most worn, um, item. I like to wear them pretty slouchy. I do not, as you can see. Well, you got a little, a little slouch. But. If but you, now that you have that thing in your hair like this, you, know what, I'm not. <laughs> you wear your hats a little differently. But it's much different in size. Yeah. Right? Compared to, like, ours. Michelle wants me to take a chainsaw safety course first before I use my chainsaw. Okay. Do they have that on, like, Indeed? Michelle. Maybe yeah. we'll have to go to um, Vermont, and she can teach me. We are going to go to Vermont in the summer. Yeah. Um, and then, so then you can do them in really, really fun colors. One of my favorite, um, uh, one of my favorite yarns for these hats is the Malabrigo Machetta, Machita. I'm not sure how to say it, but, um, it's a really, really cool, heavily speckled single ply yarn. And it really creates an awesome, um, really, really slouchy type of fabric which I absolutely um, yeah. I absolutely love. It's And then these single ply yarns are actually a lot cooler, I guess. Um, they don't hold in the warmth, obviously, as much as um, a really thick, heavily spun um, round yarn. But it's perfect for, for the spring. So I usually wear these two more in the springtime. Um, this one I usually wear in the, the fall, kind of, in that transition. Because it's more neutral and I have a lot of darker color, like, winter coats and things. And then this one is one of, this is one of my absolute favorites. This is such a cool colorway. This is called Fox Farts. It's oh, by Amanda, yeah. I by Amanda Knits. Um, and I thought it, it, like, did its cool little micro striping. And it's, I think, a really, really fun um, spring slash summer hat. Um, and it fits, you know, it fits really, really well. It's just, it's just so much fun. And I think to whoever said about the colors, I think, you know, now is like a really fun time to start wearing those colors. Um, it just makes me, it just makes me happy. So, um, yeah. So the sock head slouch, I think that's a really good, just knitting in the round. And I know there's so many options out there for just plain, like knit hats, but, um, but this one's definitely my my go to, just because I like to wear my hats um, slouchy with not a lot of fabric and that warmth, because I'm not going to shovel some snow in May. Yeah, and then for mine, I go down a needle size yes. because I did knit one. I actually don't know where it is. I knit one and it was much looser, I think, even than yours favorite one is. So I do go down a needle size. I only do about three inches of ribbing, I think. And then I do cut the length of mine by about an inch or two, just because I don't like. Um, you don't like it as slouchy. I don't like it as slouchy as yeah. Ray does. Uh, yeah. This was another one I just finished. So this one actually is out of my yarn. This is Asteroid Belt. Asteroid Belt, right? And then this one is from 
That was the North, not North Bay. No, this um, is spun right round. I is have, it? I think so. I have it right here. It's oh. called On the Pine. It's either spun right round or on the round. Nope. That's, that's Lobby the, Anime. It's not that. It's this. Okay. It is spun right round in the pines. Is it's this a really color, pretty color. Is this colorway. Um, I don't I want to see Sandy. You don't want what? Um, a woman's a notch that she doesn't want to chainsaw anything. <laughs> no, but... Oh, there's the chainsaw safety class happening in her town. Oh, really? Okay, yep. I'll go. And then um, I can take a state forestry class, apparently, and get my license. Okay. Hmm. And then... Mayhaps. It's Mother's Day in the UK. Happy Mother's Day oh, happy to all Mother's of you Day. mothers out there. Everyone in the UK. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to bring up my other things. Um, And then this is another one of my favorites. Hello, Gary. Hi, Gary. Gary from Urban Yard. Yeah, it was really nice to catch up. You don't know that we caught up with you, but we caught, no, up, we with you the, we caught up with you the other day or watching your, uh, your podcast. Awesome. Um, so then my next yeah. favorite... Well, this is a good DK weight. This is the one that I right. know, right? I don't know. I think so. Have you knit two? No, just one. I don't know which one you knit. I think that one. I don't know whose this is. I don't know, but I don't pay attention. Lyle. Lyle cap, you guys. Love it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Perfect. DK I, ju- I literally just knit this, didn't I? Yeah, you just Did I knit it. it in this color? I don't know what color that is. This is, is beautiful, that, though. Is that my colorway? Is that... um? This is gorgeous. Is that Midnight Coffee? Midnight Coffee. Remember I had a colorway I called Midnight Coffee? No. You did. Right? So this is literally to me the perfect hat. Spring is in the air. With the exception of um hatch, this is the perfect hat for me. Yeah. I like the um fit. It's DK weight, mm-hmm. one size fits all. I think it's a hundred and 20 something stitch cast on a five a one by one twisted rib for yeah. five rows i have changed it and i now do eight just to give me a little bit more of a rib oh, so i didn't i just did what they called for you did six on this one you went up one i did this yeah this one is huh. into the world this is on their dresden base i don't recall the name because i can't find it and then yeah. this one is, I think, Lane and Lotus. It is Lane and Lotus. Right? Yep. So, um, again, one of the reasons why I particularly like this is because it does create a light fabric. Yeah. Um, it's not going to protect you from, like, the extreme cold, um, but it's just enough to feel very cozy and comfortable. Uh, especially, like, today, for example. It's, you know, it's like 40 degrees outside, but it's really windy, and it's that cold Colder 40 Fahrenheit. Midnight Amy, you missed everything. Again? I don't know if this is midnight coffee. No, no this, this is, is this the one that you're coffee? wearing. Is that I a thing? I, so we'll I have di- to check back. I did dye a colorway called midnight coffee that was a dark navy and a dark brown, and that has it in there. It does. I just don't it has know everything if that's that what you I dyed. I don't know. I don't but remember I, knitting with it. I, j- I have to look back. Does anybody remember what I knit my Lyle cap in? I feel like it was only like this. two episodes again. You think it was that? This is the one you knit. I th- swear. Okay. I don't know, though. Good mm-hmm. point. So those are two great hat options. Yeah, so those are the spring. hat options. I think that that was, you know, like, this is definitely one of the most knitted, most frequently worn knitted item in the springtime for us. Although I do my cardigan, I'll probably wear yeah. more, too, like with shorts, um, especially like around the fire pit and stuff. So, I feel like we're rushing. Are we rushing? I feel like so too, because you were like, "Let's just go. Let's just let's chat. So let's have another question." Um, no, we're, we're not, not drinking. drinking. We're drinking coffee. We're having so coffee. We were supposed to podcast yesterday. Um, it's usually what we do is we podcast on Saturdays, but we didn't. So we we decided. Actually, it wasn't really a decision this morning. Kevin came downstairs and was like. Hey, do you want a podcast in, in a little in bit? In like half an hour. Like sure. literally woke up and I was, I don't like being off schedule with our podcast yeah. because I know who podcasts after we do. 
like I know that Michael's going to release the podcast next week. So I like the comfort of knowing that the week after we do one, I know that Michael's going to be coming out with one. Yeah. And I know that We Share Needles does it the same week that we do. So I like having that schedule in my head. Yeah. And I don't want to mess it up. And I felt like we would either have to podcast next weekend or wait an additional two weeks. So I woke up today. I was like, let's just do it. Yeah. Which is great because so we're having coffee now. So just coffee now. Yes. And Stuart, you definitely deserve to drink that beer. You did an excellent yes. job. And it's like 10 o'clock or something. I think it's it's 5 p.m. It's 5.19 okay. p.m. at his time. Yes. I'm pretty sure. Do you guys wear something you've knit every day? Almost. I would I say would almost. Think. Um, probably some least, socks. Pro- yes. Oh, always. I haven't, I haven't knit socks on now. I have knit socks on now too. Oh, wait. Oh, look, it's, um, Woolens and Nosh. Hold on. Wait, I'll do the same thing. Are you doing Woolens and Nosh? Woolens and Nosh. Woo! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah. So for those of you who can stay up past all of the, the dude, t- tube dudes, uh, we will have a podcast on later on. Um, um, what else? So, so yeah, we typically wear something almost every day, whether yeah. it's a shawl or socks or a hat. I really love the comfort of having a hat on. Me too. When I'm home. So I do wear hats quite often when I'm in the house. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All um, right. So next up, I think, oh, you know what? Let's do a little bit of a, a moment. Um, oh, I, I know. Think we- they're over here. I don't know. I think I may have brought them downstairs. You did? Yeah. I specifically put them over here, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I guess I'll run and go grab them. Okay. So I'm going to talk about another shawl, why Ray goes and gets some stuff. This is another fun, springy, shawly scarf, right? So this is Clockwork by Stephen West. This I will say though is a lot of a lot of knitting, but this I feel like you could wear as a scarf too, right? Oh, it actually kind of looks good as a scarf. What? Okay, look at this. It looks good as a scarf, right? How do you ask Scott? How do you ask Scott? Um. You have more yarn behind you than I have in my shop. <laughs> Who said that? Stuart. Stuart. I take back what I said. Don't drink that beer. You're getting so, yeah. a little too loose lipped. Um, this is all knit out. Uh, it's beautiful. It all really right. So I know the orange is Shibui. Shibui. The green. Oh, where's the other one? I don't know who the green's by, actually. The green might be Brooklyn Tweed Puri. Or it's going to be Winston Co. Chickadee. You didn't bring my, mine up? I didn't see it in your in the bin. I'm you sorry. didn't? No. I could have missed it. So this is, it is a lot of knitting, actually. Now that I remember this, um, I remembered that I did not enjoy getting to the end. But I still love the final outcome, and I really love the way it looked as a scarf. You just have to make sure you put it on the right way. And I don't think I'll be able to do that again. The scarf? Yeah, how did I just do that? I don't know. You show yours. So this one Kevin uh, made for me, which I love. That's Um, Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. This is Brooklyn Tweed. Um, obviously I'm, I'm like, I'm totally into like the blues and the, um, the grays and stuff. I love that. It really is just like a statement piece. Um, it does keep you, you know, keep the chill out, um, a little bit, which I think is really nice. I love the drape of it. Super, super simple. Um, I'm a little out of breath from running up and down the stairs two times, but you know what? Very long rows. I'm still able to hold a conversation. So this is it. Very pretty. Put the tail through the loop. Yeah, you do the, like a scarf. I know, I couldn't think. I just had another moment. And hello, Katie. How are you? So, love this. It's lightweight, not fussy. My tail, I did my tails wrong. That's right. Beautiful knit, long rows. It is, it's beautiful. And I don't remember how many skeins. 
It can't be that much. No, I don't think so. So I'm thinking one skein of each, probably. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'll do another one. Really? Yeah, so I remember with this one here, I really wanted to make sure that this was the orange. That was my goal for this. I wanted the orange to really pop on it. Yeah. I really I really enjoy wearing this a lot. Um, and then I did see a question that asked, what's our favorite gift knit? Oh. <clears throat> my favorite gift knit. Good question. I think that was Carrie from The Creative Obsession. Do you know she has a podcast? No way. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite one is, I love knitting a hat. I think hats are just really really easy and quick mm -hmm. and everybody for the most part everybody needs one at some point everybody right everybody needs somebody sometimes they do so i go and everybody needs i'm just kidding i'm done <laughs> how about a cow with the clockworks pattern when we change the time stop it yes all right there we go Clockwork uses 665 yards, two skeins. Perfect. Oh. So look at um, our wonderful people. What we're going to do is we are going to do a clockwork cal in November. In November when we change clocks. I'm going to put it in our phone. Okay. All right. It's done. Here, why don't you talk about these? Let's talk about baby. Okay. So these, what? Go ahead. You know what? We're just going to stop for a moment. And you know, another thing I love about spring is that it is March Madness. I know. There's basketball on almost every day of the week. Oh, there's Max. Hi, Max. Hello, Max. I'm here. Hmm. 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 Um, do you guys... So here's another question. Are you guys college basketball fans? Do you watch March Madness? And if you do, who's your team? Okay. Those are a few questions. Oh, will Kevin sell kits for it? Maybe I will. That's a good idea, Aaron. Oh, will Aaron sell kits for it? So, him? I mean, you all... I've talked about it before, but y'all um, are hearing it first. I only have three weeks left at my job. Yeah. Hey, spring is the start of something new. And then I'm going to start dyeing yarn full time. Dun, dun, dun. So we'll see. We shall see. So the next thing I want to show, um, and it's funny because I was – holding off on showing this in the podcast when in my head it was, we were going to podcast yesterday so but we ended up talking about it in the podcast and i want to talk about it here because it's so cute and it's it's right at spring what she said she doesn't watch it and she's a yukon student and yukon is playing Those tonight keys. and tomorrow and then somebody said go valpo yeah. princeton princeton men are don't see this you shouldn't have started with the basketball duke Love no, Duke, no more and basketball. They lost last night. All right. Uh, I'll give him a moment. I love Duke. St. John's. Oh, you picked the Zags, Nancy. Okay. All right. Sorry. Oh. It's okay. It's sports ball. Again. Hello, Vincent. Vincent and Max is here, and Pam is Thanks, here. Pam. Hi, everyone. Princeton. Oh, wait. Gonzaga. All right, go ahead. No, it's fine. No! Somebody said they're glad Duke lost. It's awful. All right, please continue. I'm you sorry. said that seven times already. <laughs> We're just going to sit here and stare at each other for the next 20 minutes. Oh, wait. Do we only... How much time do we have left? We have until 45. Oh, okay. Um. All right, so I think it's safe now to yeah, continue talking. Ahead. So I thought these were really cute. There's your, um, this is a crochet pattern. Uh, we mentioned briefly that uh, We Share Needles podcast, uh, Maddie and uh, Kristen. They're one of our favorite podcasts. They're two of our favorite people. Anyway, uh, Kristen is having, as a, a little one is on her way and Kristen is pregnant and she is going to be having a little bundle of joy around April time. In their last podcast, they were putting together a blanket or asking their community to help them put together a crochet blanket. And so they had asked some people to perhaps um, consider crocheting up this pattern, a couple of squares to send their way so that they can add a little bit of like their community into the baby blanket, which I thought was super cute. Yeah. And the pattern is called, I'm not sure, it's in our show notes, 
Something in the Bluebird. Oh, shucks. So somebody said you elevate... Daisy other... and the Bluebird. You elevate what? So there, it just you said um, you elevate others up. by your pattern, yarn, and supply choices. Is that intentional? I appreciate you both so much. Oh, thank Aww, you, Colleen. that's really sweet. I think for us, it's just to make sure that we're giving everybody their, their moment. So we like to talk about who we got our yarn from, who our inspiration was. Yeah. Because then it brings other people... I know, like to I their like, shops and to totally. find patterns that maybe that. they haven't heard of or a designer or a yarn dyer. So I think it's really fun to to talk about all the other makers out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm oh. sorry, please. Now, go ahead. No, it's okay. No, that was really sweet of you to say. <laughs> so this is a crocheted pattern. It is my first time making granny squares. And spoiler alert, I may have finished a certain shawl and had some leftover yarn. So I thought it would be a really cool idea to um, to do these granny squares. So I thought, I think they're super cute. This is called Daisy and the Blackbird, Bluebird, Daisy and the Bluebird. That's a cute little idea for spring, Daisy yeah, squares. Yeah, so they're little Daisy squares. I thought if anybody, you can use them as a coaster if you want to, or you can do a pillow, which the pattern actually calls for a pillow. And the pattern has... Um, the same color theme for every square so it's so the the main color of the pattern looks like it's green with the you know yellow and white daisies um in the middle but i wanted to use a leftover yarn and i thought that they all looked really cool together so i took my leftover yarn and i made i think i made six of them and i alternated the colors so you know the that gray color here is the um, the middle color here and it's the border color here and then I kind of just alternated all th you know through them all so um, Yeah, so I have a whole bunch of well six total of all alternating. I think this is my favorite colors I love that one, too. I like the I like the orange as well um, I love the. I really love that out the light color yeah. the light background. Yeah, no, it's it's I think they they were a lot of fun um and this is fingering weight held double. I used a US, um, I'm sorry, I used a five millimeter crochet hook. I'm not sure what US size that is. Because I don't know. Does anybody know what size uh, you, an eye maybe? What size a, um, a five millimeter? But these are so cute. I thought they were so cute. Um, so they'll all kind of like live in the blanket. Oh my God. Yeah, I bet. Hopefully oh my gosh, wouldn't this be a cool sweater? Carrie, that's this I mean, is pretty much what Carrie was Carrie doing. could make the sweater. I know. So, um, so I thought that they would look really cute. So this is going to be my contribution to, um, to Kristen. It's I'm going to be sending this over to her soon. If you want a, more information about the pattern and what the requirements are, um, give them a watch. We share needles. They're their very last episode they talked about um about these squares so i thought it was cute and it's got the daisy in the middle there um i thought that was perfect for spring good job thanks carrie's on it okay carrie thanks right. so much so next up is another shawl oh yeah this this shawl i i have never done one dotted rays and this is from Amanda Knits. Yeah. This is called Avocado Toast. This is the small version, which again, great little springtime shawl. Mm -hmm. Right? Totally. Perfect. It it's is it is really, really perfect. One of my favorites. I've made three of them. I've gifted the other two. My mother got one out of Hedgehog Fibers. Yeah. And then I made one for her physical therapist out of it was Shirsty green. Cat oh, and yeah. two from us, uh, Shirsty Cat yarns. Mm -hmm. So this is, re I just think this is perfect. This actually has a very springtime vibe. Like the, the color in it is a little yellowy, a little cream. Yeah. You know, kind of like butter. And well, then it's you like got avocado little, toast. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And then you have some specks of green. And I want to say the other one is like a brown, but not really. It's like a purple mm. brown. 
So, so this is another super easy knit, I think. Yeah. It's definitely on my list. I tried it a few times. You, I remember just yeah. within the last maybe six months to a year you maybe. tried it. Or maybe just it's been over a year. It's a knit front to back at the beginning that I think people get conf- not confused with, but stuck yeah. on, right? Because um, if you forget it, it throws your count off. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what my... Um what my issue was but i just i couldn't i couldn't get past the first little bit of it and i've tried it i think i tried it two or three times so and then we'll do another one did you bring my pre joint you oh my <laughs> god i thought every <laughs> kevin michael i thought you had everything out that you wanted no i took nothing out you know nothing john snow so here's a pure joy so this is by hohi locatelli so another really not too deep, has some great length to it. I definitely don't need to work out today. Um, and all of this yarn is from Nancy over at Trilogy Yarns. Yeah, this is Little Nugget. I don't know if it's still called Little Nugget. And this one is called... Teddy Bear? Teddy Bear. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's another one that you could wear as a scarf e type of thing. Yeah. Um, I knit one as well. This was my second shawl I've ever knit. And I really love the colors together of um, of mine. It's very bright. Yeah, your colors are fantastic. Yeah, I thought they were really, really cool together. Um, this is, I think it's called Dirty Truce. Yes. From leading, but these are both leading men fiber arts. Yeah. Um, Dirty Truce and no idea shoot i don't remember i don't either yeah i don't know but and I, dark gray and a dark gray um this yeah this one is another very very nice i mean all of these shawls that we're showing are very cool like springtime shawls they're they don't necessarily need to like keep you all bundled you know bundled up yeah but they can act as like accent pieces you know like a little bit of green in your wardrobe you can or you need a pop of color it's just a really pretty chartreuse green um you know it sits it's very very light yeah they're fingering weight shawls it's only two skeins um, and i remember specifically saying like because this is called the pure joy i remember specifically saying like I it really it. is a joy to knit it's like it really really is there's something about this and the short rows and going back and forth um yeah yeah, I, it, really, she did a good job with this. And the fun thing with both this and Dotted Rays, they both have short rows in it. Yeah. But you don't have to pick up your short rows the typical way that you would in like a sweater or something else where it has right. you pick up your the wrap and then put it on the needle and like knit them together in a specific way so that it falls properly. These you just kind of, um, you just kind of keep going. Mm-hmm. So you don't yes. really have to worry about it. Both of us, I believe, use a stitch marker to indicate where our next short row is because it says like knit to like six stitches before your turn, before your previous turn. Yeah. So we would throw a stitch marker on our needle after on the wrong side when we were going back. Yep. So we would turn the work, work, knit six, put your stitch marker and then knit the rest of the way so that when you turn it the right for the right way. You just knit to your stitch marker, which is already six stitches before your turn. And we just kind of, you know, went that way. And it made things so, um, so easy. Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, Fiber Hustle, I don't know if it's Aaron or Trip that's commenting, but um, Stephen West has amazing tutorials about so many different things. Short rows and brioche um, really, really helped us get through a lot. There's, there's a couple things. So, hello. I'm um, knitting posse. Oh, hello. They friends. said they were late to the party. That's okay. And Naughty Knitting Sex said she's never seen Game of Thrones. And really? somebody, oh, Naomi from Bridgeport. Hello, Naomi. Hi. That is literally next town over. So, hello. Um, And hi, welcome home, Kate. Kim. <laughs> um, And then there was something else I was going to say. I don't know. Nor do I. We have like five minutes left. Are you kidding? 
How many skeins you use for the dotted ray? So how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tissue? Pack? There's a couple versions of it. There's a small and a large. The small, I think you can get away with two. I've even gone in between mm-hmm. and just done another repeat and made like a medium one. Yep. Um, There's also uh, the dotted ray is, has quite a few versions. There's also a self striping version. So if you're using yes. self striping yarn, in the pattern tells you kind of where to put. You know where to ch- make your changes and and all of those things which is super cool up oh, and we got two towns over fairfield checking in hey, fairfield. hi art i used to live in fairfield on long dean um i want to because we have like no time and i'll sh- do this in a second i i was forgot about this guy um this is one of those things where if you have a bunch of advent skeins and you want to kind of stash down a little bit i think this is also a really good project slash um springtime shawl and this is brioche this is the brioche uh adventure wrap get it advent this is by jonathan tallow sorry boys i didn't put that in the show notes down below good luck i know thank you guys yeah thank you so much for doing that um and i love i love how squishy this is and how light it is and this can definitely be worn as a scarf. Yeah. Like Kevin was, you know, like how Kevin had had it, had his um, before. And I think it looks really, really, um, really cool. Just got to tuck those ends in that might have popped out a little bit. But um, I thought that was, this is yeah, super cozy. I is. thought this was really fun too. You can use so many different colors and those advents and scraps that you have lying around. Yeah. This is using um, oh. Uh, Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. They had their one of their yeah. Albums. That was Harry Potter yeah. year four or year five, five, I think. And then our last piece of knitting, but first, Max wanted to know who our favorite posse was. There's don't we don't that's like picking a favorite child. You don't do that. We love all three. We okay. do. And then Max, who's your favorite NATR boy? You better well, not answer that question. Don't answer that question. Nobody answer that question, please. I can't handle it. He's going to say you, and Vincent's going to say me. Doubt it. Um, <laughs> and then there so, was... Oh, okay. and somebody said, where's the coloring book page? I I moved it by accident. You've moved a lot of things. I know. Where is it? It's over there in that binder. Okay. And our last knit. Which, they're very similar. You would think that they're the same. Yours is a light gray. Light gray. This is all Miss Babs. This is Miss Babs. And then this is yarn that I dyed. Yeah. So this is Paris. Toujours. We did not um, plan that. Paris Toujours. And this is exactly why I knit it. Because there's a guy, a dude. Wearing it. Wearing it. And it made me understand. Yes. Um, This is the DK weight version. There is a fingering weight version. Yes, there is. The fingering weight version, I believe, uses two skeins, if I'm not mistaken. But this, it's lovely. I love. You know what? I may cast it on today. Another. I have no business. I have you, no business. You haven't been I've, able to make up your mind with any knitting. I have no business. I mean, cast all. on whatever you want until something sticks. It's fine. So what's really cool about this pattern is that it makes a very large shawl. But it doesn't, it doesn't feel that large. No, but like when it you're used wearing a lot it, of yarn. It four, did use a lot of yarn. Four skeins, I think. But yeah, this is definitely one of the shawls um, like that is large enough where you can wrap it around yourself. Um, yeah, which I cold. think, yeah, because this is a cool, like, let me sit outside, oh, hang out by the fire, and I have my, you know, you have your yeah. shawl over your shoulders or like whatever the case may be. Um, I just think it's, I think it's so versatile and I think it's so cool. And the, um, the pattern was super easy. It really is. Um, I think it would be really fun to do a two color version. Oh, that would be fun. So all it is is some, um, some yarn overs and your garter. Yeah. And I think if you did your garter in one color and your yarn overs in another, it could be really, really fun. Yeah. I fully agree with you. So that's kind of where I'm at with this thinking. Yeah. But this, and it's quick. I mean, Mm -hmm. I remember I knit this. What is this, knit on a six or something like that? Or a seven? I don't know. But I knit this when we were watching that documentary about the girl who went missing at the hotel. Oh, in the elevator? Yeah. When she actually. 
She was in the water. She was thing? in the water tower. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, conspiracy theories. Do you guys have? Do you guys do that? Can you remember what you were watching when you knit something? Like, do you remember? Oh, I was watching The Last of Us when I made mm-hmm. these socks. So with this, I remember watching. Um, shoot, what was that? What was that um, show called? Oh gosh, with the the math person. And... Scorpion. No, no, oh, good job. No, it was on like HBO or something. It was a futuristic show, um, and they had like the the leader was like the old man, and then he had a clone that was like the younger person. Oh, then... um, it was Apple TV Plus. Yeah, what was that? Foundation. 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 So I knit this during during us like binging that show. Anyway, I can't believe so, it's the end. I'm. I feel like, like I'm just getting started. I, I just think I'm ready for spring. Same. I'm ready for some. I'm so warmer ready. Weather. I'm ready to get out in the backyard and clean it up and go get some fresh mulch and throw in the yeah. flower beds. Oh, and we, do had, all we that didn't stuff. do that last year. No, we didn't. We do have it. a lot to do this year. Yeah. I need to find some things to cut down with my chainsaw, but apparently I need to get certified first. There. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. You need like special gloves so you don't cut off your fingers. Um, you didn't tell me all this when you bought me the chainsaw. You've asked for. It. I think I could just. I mean. No, you need to do. I'm not going to cut down that oak tree or anything like that. You can keep going. No, Michael, you have to get ready. No, Michael's next. I'm so excited. Okay, so let's actually um, let's be professors. So wait, hold on. So when I'm assuming it's Aaron, but I think it's actually Chip. Because I don't know that Aaron made a blanket. He wrote down everything I watched or listened to for two months while I worked on it. When oh. I gave her the blanket, I have the notes too. I hmm. Is it Aaron or Chip? Dun dun dun. I know. I don't know. So thank you, everybody. We have a couple of things us. before we wrap up. Oh, okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Number one. If you want to enter into our cool giveaway, which we are giving away two patterns, your choice, or we're giving away a pattern to two people, your choice of either um, a knit pattern or a crochet pattern. And the way to enter is just tell us the thing about spring. And you'll see the prompt and the link to that down below in our show notes section. It'll say, um, prize entry you go Mm -hmm. ahead and click that and you fill out the form it's wide open um we love to see all your comments there's also another section down below there for additional comments if you wanted to so we'll choose a winner in 24 hours the the thread will close so you cannot enter again for 24 hours and there's the uh, link to it thank you there's the link michael's amazing and all right holly just called me out as being a nurse and i don't have to think about safety us nurses are the worst patients we're the worst ones to take advice Uh. We give advice absolutely. Freely. He is so bad when he gets sick too. Like something. We're wrong. not like, talking about this because it's we're we we're, we're we're over our time frame. So thank you for joining us for the Tube Dudes Live Spring Edition 2023. Yes. Um, thank you, Stuart, who came on bef- before us. You saw him doing some dying with Wode and all that fun stuff. Cabin Boy Knits. Thank you guys so much. Um, we have Michael next after us. And then after Michael is the piece that is Resistance. And that is Chip and Aaron of Fiber Hustle. And this has been and this has been Needles at the Ready. Rumor has it that Michael's going to be doing an interpretive dance. Oh, he is? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so stay tuned I'm for Michael's saying. dance. I can't wait to see it. All right, we love you guys. Love um, you guys. Hope Thanks your spring is out. so fun and, and, and healthy. And uh, go do your thing. Wait, I don't even remember how to end this. Nor do I. Hit that button that says stop streaming.